Start with breaking news here at 6 a.m. A person is in custody after breaking into House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's home. Yeah, this happened early this morning at her residence in San Francisco. A spokesman for Speaker Pelosi says she was not home at the time, but the intruder violently attacked her husband, Paul Pelosi. He was actually taken to the hospital. He's expected to be okay. No word on a motive for that attack. Thanks for joining us at 6 a.m. Everyone on this Friday, I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Nettie Rampour. On to our other top story, something that's impacting a lot of families and kids. This morning, Rady Children's Hospital is at capacity, coming amid a rise in cases of RSV. This highly contagious respiratory virus straining hospitals across the country. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol live outside Rady Children's with one family's story here. Good morning. Good morning, Eric and Netta. These parents are uh, really dealing with a serious illness, and we spoke to a father who has a 10-week baby girl. Her name is Ivy. He spent eight days here at Rady Children's Hospital after uh, a really tough time with that little girl. Now, he says he spoke to us because he wants parents to know what to look out for. Feeding was really hard. Like, she was having a hard time kind of, like, swallowing and keeping, you know, milk down and everything. And then when we laid her down, like there was this raspiness in her breathing. Now at last check, there are 56 children hospitalized with RSV at Rady Children's Hospital, more than 400 confirmed cases in just the past two weeks. From doctors and nurse shortages to early and intense outbreaks here, the hospital says it's working to take care of every child who comes in, but they do admit they're stretched thin. Mobile beds will be brought in to create more space, and those who don't currently work in the ER have been called in to help. Now, in most cases, RSV will mask itself as a cold or even go away on its own, but symptoms to look out for include runny nose, decreased in appetite, coughing, sneezing, and fever. For infants, it may not be as obvious. For example, irritability or decreased activity. So the biggest thing to look out for is their breathing. If they're wheezing or it seems fast or labored, go to the ER. Otherwise, call your primary care doctor first. Now, there is a link on Rady Children's Hospital that allows parents to check how long that wait time in the ER is. Uh, six plus hours we've seen multiple days in a row. So if parents, uh, it's a good resource to know what you're walking into and how to prepare if your child is sick. I'm Dana Marie McNichol coming to you live from Rady Children's Hospital. Dana Marie, thank you. This morning, the county is reporting the first flu death of the season. Officials say the 55-year-old man had underlying medical conditions. He died on the 15th and was not vaccinated against the flu. He tested negative for COVID. The county says new lab-confirmed flu cases jumped nearly 45% last week. Officials encourage everyone six months and older to get the flu shot. We have a link to locations around San Diego County at CBS8.com. Just click on the help button. And how many Californians behind on water bills are once again at risk of having their water shut off? A state moratorium on water shutoffs has now expired. But there is some help available here. CBS 8's Chris Grow live along Harbor Island with more on that. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Eric and Ned. And look, we're working for you, especially for those of you at home wondering what it is that you're going to do next. We wanted to highlight a program that, again, is still available for those that are behind on their water bills, a way to reach out for help, especially now that moratorium has ended. Now, that's where the Metropolitan Area Advisory Committee on Anti-Poverty, it's also known as MAC, that's where they step in. It's based out of Chula Vista. Now, they actually have a low-income household water assistance program, and we spoke with the manager of the program and she tells us that emergency funds are now available to help low income families behind on their water bills. The money is possible through a federal program, which Mac is helping to administer here in San Diego. It can provide up to $2,000 for families struggling to make ends meet. Now, of course, there are income qualifications. A single person's monthly income cannot exceed more than $2,500, while a family of four must make under $4,932 a month. So any amount we've had people with, you know, $100, 150, 300, 500, and then we have seen some whammies of, you know, 3000 plus. So yeah, a lot of people again struggling to make ends meet, especially with inflation, rising costs of everything and those water bills stacking up. Now, if 
you're still in trouble, but you don't meet those income qualifications. There is still, there are still ways that you can try to again strategize. Maybe get on a payment plan. Mac is still able to help you uh, in terms of advising. We also have some very helpful tips up on our website. Just go to cbs8.com and click on that story link. Eric Anetta. All right, Chris, thank you for that. A biofuel company named Barrio Logan has just been ordered to install an odor reduction system. Residents there have been complaining about a bad smell produced by the company for many years. It's gotten worse over the last three years. Even the taste of your food is different. You know, you get sick to your stomach. There's no, no sense of comfort. I can't imagine what that's like. The man lives directly across the street from this company, New Leafs facility. He called into a hearing held by the San Diego County Air Pollution Control District yesterday. It's an issue of health and welfare. I had shortness of breath at times, nausea. Yeah, a lot of residents nearby say this has impacted their health. New Leaf now has until December 9th to install the odor reduction system. Another virtual meeting will be held November 17th to check on that progress. All right, are you feeling lucky here this morning? $800 million up for grabs in the Powerball jackpot. That is the second biggest Powerball prize ever. The next drawing is tomorrow. So what would you do if you won all that money? Head to the CBS 8 Facebook page right now to chime in. Yeah, it's your time to dream. Yeah. Put out those wishes and you never know. Obviously, they say if you put it in writing, it can happen. That's true, <laughs> right. And you don't, yeah. you don't know if you don't play. Right, right. right. 800 now, million. Are you, I wonder, if, are you the types where you pick your own numbers or you just go with the random? Oh, I have mm. my favorite numbers. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess I would too. I never really get lotto tickets, or if I do, I get the like just the scratch, the scratch ones. ones. Yeah, okay. uh, but I would probably pick my own. I think I not that it really. I it. I would be curious to see if there's ever an advantage one way or the other. Right. I don't think there really is. Um, I don't know your any past are, winners. I, yeah. I can't call them. When your chances <laughs> are like one in two hundred sixty million, I don't really think it matters. <laughs> yeah. I want to know how the computer is picking those numbers. <laughs> right? That's what I'm curious about. Uh, it's another very quiet, uh, mild start to our Friday. Temperatures outside are a bit chilly out there, so jacket could come in handy. Mid fifty degree temperatures are what we have to start off the day. But take a look at where we're going. Seventy along the coastline, seventy five inland. These temperatures are just a few degrees warmer than yesterday. Ridge of high pressure keeps building overhead between now and Monday. So between now and Monday, we're going to get a slow and steady warm up uh, as the afternoons come about. Winds are slightly offshore. You see mainly easterly winds and northerly winds. So northeasterly component that we're working with right now. Uh, gusts are most intense over the mountaintops and the foothills for the most part right now. Uh, along the coastline, we're still in the single digits. So going through the next 12 hours, we've got a lot of sunshine in the mix. When those winds are offshore, when ridge, the ridge of high pressure overhead is building. Well, that sets us up pretty well for a very nice afternoon. The thing is, those winds are not too breezy by any means, and that ridge of high pressure is building ever so slowly. It's not a dramatic shift in conditions out there. So what we're going to be seeing between now and Monday is a very slow gradual warm up, maybe two degrees of warming each day between now and Monday, uh, leading to a great time to head out trick or treating. So the kids are going to enjoy our Monday evening. Keep in mind, though, temperature do tend to cool down pretty quickly as soon as that sun sets. I mean, temperatures are going to make their way to the mid 60s tonight and expected in the same range by the time we get to your Monday night. 70 for Saturday, 72 for Sunday. A couple more clouds tomorrow as onshore flow resumes, so we could pick up on a little bit more of uh, that push along the coastline of those marine clouds. Sunday will have uh, less cloud cover in the picture. Temperatures in the mid 50s overnight, and then it looks like uh, as far as traffic goes, as we kick off the morning, things have been very quiet. So let's transition to that as we start off the day. Want to take you to a closure that we are continuing to track. It'll take place on Saturday. So this will be Saturday night into Monday morning. The northbound State Route 125 and uh, State Route 94 interchange are going to be closed. That's going to be mainly trying to make your way northbound on the 125, but both the westbound and eastbound 94 interchanges are going to be closed. They're working on some construction in the area and uh, you're timing again Saturday night through Monday morning. As far as the forecast goes coming up, we're going to be talking about uh, the wet weather that is in our future as we head into the about middle of next week. Wednesday, Thursday is our best time frame to start to pick up on more rain in the forecast. So that'll be coming up in just a few minutes. Back to you.